Hey everyone, um, hope you're having a good day today. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about how I was able to deal uh, with opiate withdrawal and ult ultimately what worked for me to get off of it. Um, everyone's different. Everyone's situation is different. So I'll, I only could go by what I went through. Uh, I'm going to split this video up in three parts um, because uh, it's, it's a little, little long and I want to go in detail as much as I could on each part. Uh, so let's start with the first one. Let's get to it. So the first part I call cold turkey. Now this is getting off of it um, without any medical interventions. So if you want to be able to get off of it or you have a loved one or friend um, that you're trying to help to get off of opiates, um, then I'm going to try to prepare you as best as possible if you're planning to do this at your home or whatever uh, without any type of intervention whatsoever, whether, whether it's uh, medically or rehab or so forth. Um, but I will tell you this up front, uh, this method is hardly works. Uh, I could never do it. I don't know anyone else who did it. Uh, and when I say do it, I'm not saying just going through it for the first couple of weeks. I, when I mean getting, I mean staying, getting off of opiates and staying off. Uh, the withdrawal process, yes, I've done it many times. I've seen people do it. It is painful. Uh, the most painful part, and I'll give you the best advice as possible on how to get through it. But really, this is going to be a really hard one to do without any type of interventions whatsoever. So I'll just give you my advice. Okay, so let's just, I'm going to break this up in days. So let's start with part one. Or, I'm sorry, day one. Um, the first day, the first 24 hours, you're going to start feeling, um, well, let me try to use I statements as much as possible. Um, I started feeling really bad around the 12th, 13th hour. Now, it's not where you're getting any of the major symptoms, but you're sort of kind of panicking knowing that you're going to um, go through a world of hell, you know, that's going to be coming up. So what I did was I just tried to sleep as much as possible and try to, you know, um, sleep through it where I won't feel as much of it as as much as I should until the withdrawals actually come on. So and you're going to be really tired. And so for me, I was able to sleep uh, for the first eight hours. I really didn't have any problems. But once I woke up, I started feeling really bad. Um, and so I would say around the 20th hour, that's when you're going to start going through the first part of it, which I think it's going to be cold sweats and hot flashes. For this, you should have a fan and a heater. You will be cold, you will be hot, you'll be sweating a lot. Ah, that rhymed. <laughs> but anyways, um, so you want to be as comfortable as possible, right? So a fan, one of those really big box fans are the best thing best thing to get for this situation. Also get extra sheets, blankets, uh, underwear, t-shirts, you know, any type of clothing. I mean, you're going to be hurting so bad that you're not going to want to be digging through your closet. Uh, and we all know that sleeping in dry clothes is way more comfortable than sleeping in wet clothes. And, and you just want it in arm's reach. You know, you want to just be able to grab it, put it on, and get back to bed as, as, as fast as possible. Same thing with your sheets and blankets. You're going to be sweating through it. You know, if you leave it, again, you know, it's not fun to sleep in damp blankets. Plus, it's going to be, uh, it's going to stink the place up. You know, make sure you open a window. So you just want a lot of air circulation in there. Um... And that's pretty much going to be for the first day. You're not going to really go through much more than that. Maybe some muscle ache. And I'm just talking about the physical parts of it. Mentally, yeah, you'll be craving it. Uh, but you'll be doing a lot of sleeping. While once the first 24 hours is up and you've done a lot of sleeping, at least when I did it, then you have a hard time going back to sleep. Because 
Now you're really hurting. Uh, this is when the diarrhea, the nausea, the muscle aches really come on strong. So on day two, let's do a diarrhea. Um, you can get Imodium. You can try it. It didn't work for me. Um, and because you're very nauseous, it's hard to keep medicine down anyways. But if it helps, you could try to get Imodium. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing I could really give advice on that. As far as nausea goes, again, same thing. You could get Dramamine, but it's anti-nausea pill. But again, it would be hard to keep down. And for me, it didn't really work. But there's one thing you should have beside your bed is a bucket. Now, once you initially throw up and vomit, all of that stuff is pretty much going to be out of your system. And plus, you haven't eaten for a day anyways. Most of it's digested. So you're just going to really just be throwing up any, any liquids that you drink or just bile. I mean, sorry to sound very graphic, but that's just the way it is. You know, I threw up so much. To the point where I was convulsing. I couldn't even breathe. I had to catch my breath. Um, when I was throwing up. Because I was convulsing so much. And sometimes you just can't make it to the toilet. And again. You don't want vomit all over you. Or any type of. You know. That kind of stuff coming out of your body. So make sure. You have some type of trash can. Or a small. Um, um, bowl or something. To catch all this stuff. Um, muscle ache. Muscle ache is another big one. Um, really, you could try Tylenol or leave ibuprofen, but again, same situation with the other ones. Didn't really help, and that's if you can even keep it down. Uh, I do find, though, that massages help a lot. I don't know if you have a loved one or someone there to give you massages, but that does help. Hot baths kind of help. Um, and any like maybe massage tools that you have can also make you feel good. But again, you're going to be dealing with muscle ache, diarrhea, and nausea on day two and three. Um, when you're going through all, all of this, you're going to be losing a lot of water and electrolytes. And you're going to be thirsty. But again, it's going to be hard to keep, keep it down on the first couple of days. So... You want to load up on, I would say, the best thing for nausea for me actually worked with Sprite or 7-Up, uh, to be honest. But that's just me. Um, but I would get some soda like Sprite or 7-Up. Definitely get Gatorade because it has electrolytes in it and then water. Uh, just make sure you have all that with you and you buy all the stuff before you plan to go into uh, your withdrawals. And just have it right there in grabbing distance. Um... You want to get food, you know, around day three or day four, you, you, the nausea is going to go away. The diarrhea is going to go away. You're going to still feel really bad, but you're going to start getting hungry, but you're going to be very, very weak. So you need very soft foods, you know, uh, not heavy foods like yogurt. You want yogurt or chicken soup or jello. Uh, make sure you, you buy that stuff uh, and stock up before uh, you go through the withdrawals because you're not going to want to go out and buy food or go to the store and usually you, not, you might not have these items uh, there on a daily basis so I would say those three things at least for me that's what that's what helped the best um, and after day four like day four through day seven for the most part physically you're going to feel better but you're still going to feel very weak. Muscle ache is definitely um, going to be lingering around. Like muscle ache and bone ache. I would say that probably lasts for almost a couple weeks. And then obviously you're going to have trouble sleeping. Now, of course, consult with your doctor. But around day four, now you're fine, uh, finally feeling a little bit better where you're not nauseous. You're not having diarrhea. Um which is hard to sleep when you have those two things. But you're still going to be hurting. So it might help to get some kind of sleep sleeping aids. Um, maybe, uh, I don't know. Again, I don't want to say anything. So talk to your doctor about that. 
but any kind of sleep medication might help in, in this case. So once you hit day seven, then physically you're going to feel, I want to say normal, you're going to be very weak, but very drained, but most of the symptoms are going to be gone. And this is when the mental pain comes in, I call it the mental pain. Uh, your cravings are going to be high, very high. You're going to think about opiates, whether it's heroin or fentanyl or whatever you did. You're going to think about it 24-7. You're going to dream about it. At least I did. Um, and this is usually during the time when I, if I was going to relapse, usually it's around this time that I would relapse when it's early. I just, I can't take it anymore. I'm just going to go get more and then... Uh, and then you got to start the whole process over again. But that's how strong it is. Um, the cravings are going to be high. And the cravings last around at least a couple weeks. Like strong cravings. You're going to crave it for a while. But I'm talking very strong cravings. You know, I always compare it. You know, put a, a an overweight guy in front of a juicy hamburger. And let him sit there in front of it. He's starving. How long do you think he's going to last until before he devours that thing? You know what I mean? <laughs> There's only so long you can last. So, why I'm saying this is because I think at this point is when it's important to go to a rehab facility. Somewhere where you can keep your mind busy. Somewhere where you can go through what other people are going through and that you're just not doing it on your own. Some type of medical not medical but like a rehab facility is is good at this point and that's why a lot of rehabs don't allow people in there until unless they're at least you know at least three or four days clean um but a week definitely and i think this is when rehabs uh will will take in play you know will be a good idea because after the cravings and after a couple of weeks i'm talking about just the strong cravings then the other uh mental um withdrawals come in like anxiety and depression uh you know i'm not gonna go through it medically but you know you could do your research but you know we have all this stuff in our brains like dopamine and serotonin that regulate regulate our mood and all that stuff and it's all out of whack or it's depleted your your brain chemistry is just it's just you know very unbalanced so you're going to go through uh it's normal to go through anxiety and depression uh, you can go to the doctors and get antidepressants or anti-anxiety pills like benzos but then you got to be careful careful of those because those can cause a whole new set of problems and withdrawals you know i've known people who were addicted to opiates and when they didn't have it were going through withdrawals and addicted to benzos and if they didn't have it, we're going through withdrawals. And you can actually go through withdrawals of benzos if you don't have it while still being on opiates. You know, so you got to be very careful with these these drugs. Um, in small quantities, and, and if you take it as prescribed, it will work. But a lot of people, especially addicts, will abuse it. So you have to watch out for that. But in this case, that's why I think rehabs come into play. And it will be, be a very good idea to go to one. But... Um, yeah, that's about it, I would say. I mean, if you have any questions, uh, you can leave it in the comments. But that's just a general idea of what to go through if you're trying to go go through it cold turkey. But just make sure all the supplies that I mentioned in this video you pick up before you start the process. Or if you're a loved one or a friend, you know, go buy this stuff and make sure they have this stuff before um, they start the process. Okay, I um, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, uh, we'll talk about part two in the next one. Thanks.